this fashion travesty can only mean one thing. We're going on a trip. Yeah. Just, just Southeast Asia. So it's cold here in Japan, so you gotta put the socks on with the sandals, look like an idiot. And then you fly on down there and it's warm, take off the socks. Yeah, immediately. So we're flying, I know this flight is to Kuala Lumpur, and then we're there for a couple of hours, and then we're going to Borneo, which is an island in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. Brunei? Brunei? We're going Brunei. Brunei. I looked it up, and they were like, it can be Brunei or Brunei. Like, that's what the lady on the internet said. And I was like, oh, what do I do? Let's go Brunei. Brunei? You think Brunei sounds yeah. good? I'm going to go Brunei, okay? Wait, well, then why are we not then, doing the same we're, then, then Are we, we're covering both places yeah, and yeah. we do it that yeah, way? Yeah, we're both okay. right. So it's a, country, it's a little country that's on this big island with Indonesia and Malaysia. So that's where we're going, and we're going to a place in Malaysia, right? No. Where are we flying to? We're going straight to Brunei. Or Brunei. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so it's an overnight flight. In, right now it's 11 p.m. Yeah. In about 14 hours, yeah. we'll be in Brunei. Or Brunei. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> this is good. I like this setup. I'm excited. Welcome to Malaysia. We're in Kuala Lumpur and um, we have a few hours so it's like 7 a.m. ish and our flight leaves at 1.45 ish to go to Brunei. Or Brunei. <laughs> You're listening to me, you're not so fast on it now. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and um, we're gonna we're gonna take a train um, and go up about 20 kilometers to a little town where there is a food court, and that's the whole reason we're going. So we hit an ATM, and as you know, like we did, we don't we come with like no money, like we didn't exchange any money before or anything. I've got a little bit of Japanese yen in my wallet, but it's always like, is the ATM gonna work? And it just worked for a try, no problem at all. And bam, we got some money. The problem is we aren't really clear on the exchange rate. <laughs> We think we got fifty dollars, but we're yeah, not we sure. Yeah, we think we got fifty dollars worth of we're, like USD worth of um, Malaysian kroners, but we got one, two, three. We got two hundred uh, Malaysian kroners. Let's examine these kroners. Weeks. Who's this guy? He's looking alright. God right. dang, yeah, man! Yeah, look at that mustache. I like him. That mustache is great. What oh, these are on? ringets. We these get to say ringets. ringets. Okay, yeah. we're not gonna say we can't say kroner ringets. Too fun to yeah. say. Yeah. All right. That, not bad. That's a. That hand position, if tilted just a little bit yeah, further forward, little, could little be weird. bad. I wonder what I don't that know. means. So anyway, yeah. All right. um, yeah, it, what's fun, we've been to Malaysia before, but we don't remember. I mean, it was like six years ago, seven years ago or something. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link someplace if I remember. You can check that out, or you can search our channel. <laughs> you gotta pimp it, man. Let's find this train. We decided to leave the airport so that we could get food. And so we're going to go to this food market, but on the way to the food market, we realized we were hungry. <laughs> so we've come and we've gotten a snack. And I've gotten a, a, this thing. Do you remember what it's called? No. I don't remember I, what it's called either. I, it's steamed, it, right? It's whole wheat bun that's yeah. steamed. You can get it toasted or steamed. Inside, you're going to find margarine and kaya. And we don't know what kaya is. It's a word I've heard. I think. Well, or am I just thinking of the kayak? I've heard of a kayak. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat kayaks. How's it smell? Give it the old Katie sniff. Like bread and, bread and butter. That's what it <laughs> smells like. It tastes like how I thought it was going to taste. Mm. Like, um, in Japan, they jellyfy um, peanut butter. Like, they blend it really, really smooth, and it, it, it's very sweet and very different from peanut butter. Um, but it's what you'll find on the shelves there, and I kind of feel like that's what this is. The steamed bun is great. Not disappointed with this one. We've had a little snack, and I am sufficiently caffeinated now, so I'm going to tell the story that I wanted to tell Eric, but it was kind of hard to hear each other on the plane. We actually sat in two aisle seats across from each other, and that's difficult. When your ears are all adjusting, you can't hear each other, so we just decided we were not talking for a while. It was a nighttime flight, too. Other people trying to get their snooze on whatnot, you know what I'm saying? So, um, before they turned the lights on, I was like, okay, I should try to go to the bathroom now. And I'm watching the light that shows whether the bathroom is vacant or whether someone's using it. It's red. So I sit there and I'm like watching the light, watching the light, watching the light. It turns green. I stand up and I look over to the bathroom and there's a guy standing outside of the bathroom and I'm like, well, maybe he's just stretching his legs. I look over at the light. It's green. I was like, all right, I'm going to go out there. So I go out there, look at the guy. He kind of just looks like he's standing there. I look at the bathroom. It says vacant. So 
I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just give it a try. So I get between the guy in the bathroom and I go to turn the knob and I pull the door open and there's dude inside the bathroom doing his thing. Like a third dude or a, a second dude? Another dude. Oh. And I'm like, uh, okay. And I close the door and I turn around to the guy behind me and I was like, well, that was weird. And I just walked away. But as I'm walking away, I realize like, dude that's just standing there knows what's happening. Why did he let me open that door? How do you door? know he knows? Maybe he came after the guy went in. Oh, because he, yeah. He's waiting in line for the bathroom. <laughs> like, I mean, he could be stretching his legs. Oh, the train is here. Yeah, check this I out. Think... It looks like the, the Narita Express. But I think that that guy was just having some morning lulls <laughs> at my expense. Did you, see, did you see any morning sausage? I saw no morning sausage. <laughs> I saw plaid. All I saw was plaid. <laughs> We rode that train like that 20 kilometers a little up the road and it's a nice train like it's uh one of those like an airport train where there's like a lot of space inside for like everybody to have room for their, their suitcases and everything and i mean compared to a japanese train everything feels real spacious because it's not a zillion people inside of it but um watching out the windows it's just like you're cooking through the forest and like that you know it's like all these um it's like trees and trees and trees and then we noticed we came up on something that looked like kind of like new modern-ish sort of construction and that was just outside of where we are, so I think that um, that construction might have something to do with the little town that we have found ourselves inside of. Well, uh, now we're trying to figure out how to get to where we want to go, this food court. Any clues? Walk outside. You walk outside, that's what we're gonna and do. Maybe keep walking to the destination. You think it's 4K though, right? Yeah, we're gonna need transport of some <laughs> I gotta take this jacket off because we're not in winter anymore. <laughs> Somebody's got the Wi Fi hot spot of horny vagina. That girl. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> my my, my Wi-Fi hot spot is got wood. Why? I've got wood. <laughs> <laughs> so getting a taxi was pretty easy. There was a little taxi stand and um, we went to this girl and she was like, you give me two ringgits, right? <laughs> yep. And then we gave her two ringgits and then she pointed at a cab and she was like, take it, take it, take, take that guy's cab. And then he was completely, we think pretty honest. It looks like he might've gone around the biggest roundabout in the world a little further than he needed to go. Maybe there was a more direct route, but it wasn't that terrible. But as you're driving down the road, you're seeing things in the background and you're like, whoa, we're in Malaysia. Because you're seeing things like this and you're seeing things like this. And it's just like so striking to see like architecture like that. It's like you are in a different place, <laughs> hardcore. You are not in Japan anymore, like for sure. Now we gotta find a food market. I don't even know if it's open yet. It opens at nine, right? What time is it? Is it even nine? It's 9.02, perfect. Dang. Do you know how to find it from here? No. Can I get... <laughs> have to find another cab? It said it's beneath Datran Putra. Is that where we are? That's where we are. So it's just down. Start digging. Okay, so I'm reading our guidebook and we're at Datran Putra, which is a big roundabout. It's just a giant roundabout that has like a nice fountain that is not fountaining. Um, but there's a big fountain in the middle. And it says on two sides of this roundabout, let me tell you about circles, no sides. No sides at all. But uh, that really bothered me, so I thought I'd share that with everyone. Uh, behind us, are, this is where the Prime Minister comes to do his business. This is Perdana Putra. And it looked, we, we sat there looking at it and then looking at the mo mosque next door, and we were like, that's definitely like state and church. Uh, that sounds weird, but you know, like this really looks governmental and that really looks religious and they are right next to each other um i think we're gonna head over to the to, to the mosque now state and mosque yeah Separation, but you can, you're gonna start a war mosque? man you gotta be yeah. careful <laughs> uh, this is not america son things are not always separated good point <laughs> I think what gave this one away as being a governmental building is you've got these gates and then there's a line of flags which really like gives away like the government vibe. And then Katie pointed out that even though there's these curved domes and stuff on it, there's also a lot of very hard lines like, you know, like things that you would think of from like Washington DC or whatever, like these, this, the roof over here is just like a straight line and that doesn't feel mosky, I guess to me. You, you kind of, you agree with me? 
I'm the one that said it. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree. <laughs> let's go look at the mosque and see if there's any hard lines. We're gonna go over there and there's gonna be all these hard lines on it. And we're, are you sure it's a mosque? Like you're 100%? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 100%. Yeah, cool. We've happened to be here during the mosque's visiting hours for non-Muslim people. And so we've decided, why not? We'll just come on in here. And um, it's beautiful. It's amazing. And our book says that the architecture is like a Iranian-style architecture. And there's some hard lines, but it's, we, we, it's not the same. It's not the broad shoulders that those government buildings have. And I think that's what that, that's what it is, right? It's, there's no broad shoulders. And there's you also, are just taking all... <laughs> I'm giving you so much lines. material. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the other thing is the, the government building doesn't have minarets like this. And it's unbelievable looking. Can you see the top of it in the camera Hold at on, all? Hold on, I'm trying to keep yeah, you. Yep, get taller, get taller, get taller, really get taller, get taller. Yeah. Got it. It's huge. It's just, it's like one of, <laughs> it's one of those things like it looks like there's no clouds but it looks like it's disappearing into the sky forever. Let's check out Katie. What's Katie up to? What's up? <laughs> we have on the appropriate attire now. <laughs> I remember the first time actually in uh, Kuala Lumpur I went to my first mosque and uh, they had me put the robe on and I, I felt so strange because Eric and I were wearing the exact same thing like a short sleeve shirt, pants, shoes. I didn't feel as though I was showing off anything that I shouldn't be showing off, but I was given a robe and it was totally cool with it. The, the robe looked amazing. It's like it. one of my favorite shots of all of our travels, so I was excited to put the robe on today. And it looks like a lot of other people are excited to put the robe on today. They're doing some crazy shots and stuff and they just look really cool. And it seems like there's a lot of Chinese tourists. I'm on, a, I'm on a team now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> So I'm not disappointed about having to put the robe on or feel weird about it. In a way, it's kind of like experiencing something that I wouldn't get the opportunity to do in any other way that wasn't weird. Like, I can't go and put a headdress on and not feel like I'm doing something I shouldn't be because, you know? But here, I can do this and kind of feel like, what, what does the world see of me if I go that route? So, I don't know if I'm speaking weirdly, but <laughs> that's just how I feel. Just making some shots, and Katie has wandered off, and now I can't find her. <laughs> Where did she go? Everybody's on the same team. <laughs> ah, there she is. <laughs> you disappeared into a team of teammates. <laughs> I could run away right now. Yeah, you could get oh, away, no, totally. <laughs> All right, I'll keep that in mind. So it is unbelievable inside. It is really, really big. And look at all the architecture and the size of this dome. I really hope that's being captured properly on the camera because it's shockingly big. Wow. I'd also like to point out that the size of this carpet is no joke. <laughs> this is a really big carpet. So while we were inside the mosque, um, a security guard started talking with Katie and he was explaining some of the architecture and how even though like you have different colors and stuff on the walls, he said that's not paint, it's actually been carved with different types of rock and put up there. So it hasn't been done like after the fact. When they built this thing and they designed it, they were like, okay, this kind of rock's gotta go here, this kind of rock's gotta go here so they could create these intricate patterns and everything. And he also mentioned they had stuff that was from Italy, um, like they had marble from Italy and some of the stained glass was from Germany. And then, was it the chandeliers that he said were from? Istanbul. Istanbul. Oh, they were my favorite. Yeah. And I, I think it was just because it's very harsh looking in such a swirly pink yeah. <laughs> area. Yeah, it was just really, it was, a, it was the architecture is just incredible. And I want to say, I made a friend while I was in there, talked to her for, gosh, has it been 30 minutes? Yeah, probably about It feels about like that. 30 minutes. It feels like 30 minutes of sweat in this. <laughs> this is not, not breathable. Yeah, it's warm here, by the way, guys. It's We're getting, getting near the it's equator. It's warm. Um, <laughs> sun's almost high in the sky. <laughs> and I made a friend in there, and what's interesting is that the, the security guard, who was a man, told us about the architecture and the formation of the building, and he felt very comfortable talking about that. And then the the woman came and she kind of gave it like a motherly spin on Islam and was really informative and not in a pushy way. And I asked her more about her thoughts as opposed to what's the general consensus. Yeah, and like how does I, it relate to her as yeah, a person and, and she stuff? Said, like, like, I asked her what her take home thing about uh, Islam would be and she said that Allah is a great helper. And 
I think that's a great thing to know about how they think that their God is helping them as much as possible. Mm. So I had a great time talking to her. It was cool to get that personal spin yeah. on something like this. So you don't have that access no, to, to no. that type of like, you can't just go up to somebody on the street and be like, so, you know? Yeah. So it's really cool to be in this atmosphere. And she was just so chill and so... Very chill. Like, she's younger than us, but motherly. Yeah. It was really cool. She was a great person. And I felt like you could really ask her anything to a point that wasn't offensive. No, of like, I could ask her things that I wanted to know. And it was great. Yeah. Let's this get, mosque is wonderful. Let's, let's find this food court, y'all. Yeah, and less sunshine. <laughs> I didn't realize this when we were inside the mosque, but it actually sits on this big body of water, which is a... We think man-made lake, because it's shapely and interesting, and when I looked at it on the map the first time, I was just like, whoa, like it stands out compared to other areas on the map for real. Like, just like, shapely. That's all I gotta say about that. And the other thing I wanted to say was that I love winter. Winter is my, my favorite hol <sighs> holiday. It's my favorite <laughs> season. But there's something about heat that just says adventure to me. And I'm starting to boil a little bit, and I'm starting to feel it, and it's really making me excited. So you got that Uniqlo heat tech I, on. I have heat tech on, not, not only up here, but I also have on leggings under my pants, <laughs> two pairs of socks. I'm gonna die. <laughs> You're still wearing the ghetto socks? I'm wearing the ghetto yeah, socks. Man, you gotta get the socks off. It's the adventure socks. time. We're the done. The socks are underneath the heat tech. Oh. It's a, it's, I've, I've created a trap. <laughs> The food court that we were looking for, it was seriously just below us. Like, we walked outside and there was an escalator into the ground of food. And we ended up at just a random food stall. We were heading towards one, but we got sidetracked by another that looked really, really popular. And um, it's popular because of this. Everyone was getting this. And I found out that lobster is expensive everywhere. Well, kind of. I mean, is that a lobster or a giant shrimp? Or is there a difference? You know, I don't have any idea. We're gonna we're gonna break into this bad boy if I can get in here. It's really big. Yep. Super big. But I mean, your I meal. I would say it smells more like shrimp than lobster. Your meal was 55 ringgit, right? 55 ringgit, which. Divide by four, it's over ten dollars. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. Um, this is mushy. It yeah. doesn't have like the texture that you expect from a shrimp. That's like that that crunch, but yet soft on the inside. It's not like that at all. How's the flavor? Um, shrimpy. Yeah. It doesn't really feel like there's anything added to it. More like a shrimp than a lobster. More like a shrimp than a lobster. Trying to taste the outside. It's pretty cool looking though. Yeah, it was really like, cool looking. Look at it that was thing. <laughs> definitely worth what ended up happening. But maybe I'll pay attention to prices a little bit better instead of just going, all right, they're having that, I'm having that. But then again, I wouldn't have this amazing thing on my dish if I did that. What else have you got? You got a curry? I, and got, I got the world's I... weirdest naan. <laughs> naan. And what kind of meat do you think is in that curry? It is lamb. Oh, really? That's what he was yelling at me. Oh, he was, oh, he was yeah, yeah, he was. Lamb. Oh, well, I'm on board with that guy. That's a good idea. Yeah. Go ahead and give me a uh, uh, good spice level. Ooh, got a good bit of kick. Oh, I'm not disappointed. I could have just gotten that, but then again, I wouldn't have this amazing thing on the plate. I kind of wish that. Oh wow. Oh my god. I got some lamb. Did you? you That's didn't, on fire. It's real good. You're saying that you wish. What you saw, mm. and you, you got that at a different restaurant, and it ended up just being kind of basic bitch shit. Yeah, I got some fried rice basically. But hey, let's be real my me, my stomach, and all that. If you've been following our series outside of Japan for a while, you know I need to keep it like as safe as possible. But I also did get this is like a three, I can't remember what it's labeled three flavored, three layered tea. And then um, we got tea, then we got cream. Tea. I don't know if it's water. It's probably watery at this point, but um, I'm gonna mix this guy up. And I know what I'm getting into. I, we, when we were in Malaysia before, I remember drinking these and thinking they were spectacular. Yeah, I do. I don't remember this at all. So I know it's good, but you get to experience it for the first time again for the second time. Am I right? I'm really happy that I can't remember things sometimes. <laughs> Find a 
you guys will see. Yeah. We assumed, because this is sort of a touristy place that we were at, that there would be like taxis like all over the place. But as we left, we realized there's no taxis. <laughs> we're in a little bit of a time crunch to catch an airplane too, so it's a little bit like, oh no. So I went into this information area and I was like, dude, where are the taxis? And he's like, walk across this bridge. And this bridge is a pretty long bridge. <laughs> so I go down there and you'll probably find a taxi. Probably find a taxi. Well, we've walked across the bridge and we have yet to find a taxi. So now we're just kind of frantically looking around for a taxi. It seems like maybe they're prohibited from like congregating in this area or something, or maybe they don't even do that in Malaysia, where there's like groups of taxis, you know, trying to pick up customers or whatever. Or maybe because everybody in this area has cars, there's just not very many taxis. I don't know. How are we gonna get back to the train? <laughs> this building is the Ministry of Finance. Still looking for a taxi though. <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna help me out or not. And there's not even very many cars coming. You wanna Hokkaido this one? We might need to. <laughs> yeah, grab a hitchhike. Does that work here? I don't know. <laughs> we might find out. So that guy was wrong. There's no taxis on the other side of that bridge. We've crossed another bridge, still no taxis. So now we're doing this. And kind of unclear on if they know what this means here. Like, does, is that a thing? I don't have a sign to write anything on. That's what I'm used to doing, but uh, we'll give it a try because I don't know what other options are. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss this airplane, son. I don't either. <laughs> All right, so uh, right after I made the last video, oh, we got a lady coming. Right after I made the last video, a guy pulled over and he gave us a ride all the way to the train station. Super, super nice guy. Yes. So it only, I think that was not my fastest time getting picked up, but it was like in the top five, ten or something. I did it. She, well, you had a girl. You got a girl with a good smile. It turns it around really fast. Not he fair. was looking Cheating. from behind. Oh. Yeah, girl. <laughs> As we were running down these stairs, the train left. And the trains only come every half an hour. So now the train will be here at like 11.50. And we think <laughs> our flight is at 1.50. And it's a 20 minute train ride. Doing all this math and thinking about having to go through security and immigration, getting a little worried. When a train passes through here, they don't slow down at all and they're like right on the platform, like really close. It's not like a second track or something in the middle to separate you between them. So it goes by and it feels like it's gonna suck you off the platform in the train. Pretty freaky. So we've made it to the airport and everything and we're flying out of Kuala Lumpur International Airport and the security here is so incredibly lax that we had no like trouble at all getting to the gate and everything on time even though we felt like we were going to be really really tight on time. <laughs> the girl didn't even look at me when I walked through the metal detector and it was all beeping because I left my belt on. It's a big metal piece on my belt. It's like beep 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 and she was just like looking talking to her friends and stuff so like the line is just like rolling through. So no problems but you know. Get you wonder about that security situation. Like this is an international airport. You could get on the plane here and then fly anywhere, connect and then do whatever and have like whatever you got. You know what I'm saying? Mm. All right, we're in Brunei. Or Brunei. <laughs> we heard somebody pronounce the guy pronounced it on the. They were speaking um, whatever the language they speak here is. It really got this research here, and uh, mm. on the airplane, like they were making the announcement, we're about to arrive. Blah blah blah. And he said it, and we heard it. We were both like, okay, we know it That's now. That's the way we need to say it. And now we forgot. We both com completely forgot. <laughs> Brunei, Brunei. I think, I don't know, I don't want to go down this road every time we have to talk about it. So, um, when we arrived uh, and we were flying in, you could see some like ridiculously massive houses, like palaces basically, that we flew over this neighborhood that was like full of. So, I wonder if we're going to see a lot of that. I know this place is very rich for oil, and um, it might be the only sultanate in Asia, in like Southeast Asia. Yeah, I think it might be. Can you think of any other sultanates we've been to? Isn't Oman is a sultanate, Oman, yeah. right? And maybe, is the UAE a sultanate? It's like a collection of sultanates or something. I don't it's know, I'm not quite sure. It's an emirate. Yeah. Are, 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 is that sultanates with I emirates? Know. I don't know. But so far it's like super, super clean and um, it feels ridiculously safe here It feels already. clean and kind of a bit low key because that's a very small international airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really nice international airport. Like it was like, it had facilities and it was like modern, but it was really small. I bet they don't get too many flights. So it's kind of interesting, I feel like, already that this is this little pocket of, like, it's kind of got the same cultures around it, you can already tell, but it's a little bit different because it's got that oil money. Mm. <laughs> 
Anyway, we're on a little bus. Oh, that's Maybe amazing. Tea. In Thailand, we used to be scared of the little green buses, and we just straight up hopped on this little green bus. Well, she was pretty like, come on. Yeah, she yeah, was. No problem. So, yeah, so we're on our way to our hotel, we think. Yeah. A little bit of a pronunciation yeah. issue. I, I, I booked it like 20 minutes ago, so we'll see. <laughs> Friends. All right, I think I'm gonna tell everybody everything I know about Brunei. Or Brunei. <laughs> and how to pronounce the name of the country properly is not one of them. Um, so it's a it, the island that we're on is Borneo, and Borneo is was our goal to come to on this trip essentially, and it is split by three different countries. Um, it is Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. Or Brunei. <laughs> And Brunei, or Brunei is a very small country that got rich from oil at one point. And um, I mean, it's small, like, I don't know if it's bigger or smaller than Singapore, but it's kind of like in the city state area of size. And um, did you find something fun? Find some flowers? It smells interesting, but not exciting. <laughs> And you have the main part of the country, and then there's a little enclave that's like right next to um, the country, but not actually touching it. The whole country, both sections, are surrounded by Malaysia and has some coastline. It is a very religious place. Um, Islam has got very strong presence here. And I think they're under the process of like adapting Shira law, which I was a little surprised by finding out. Like when I found that out, I was a bit, bit, bit surprised, but so I expect it to be kind of like, I don't know if repressed is the right word, but like strict feeling, but like it doesn't seem that way. Like women are walking around, their hair is out. Not everybody, some women are wearing headdresses and stuff, but it doesn't feel like it's like, like hardcore, like, you know, that image that as a Westerner you have in your head of sheer law, that doesn't seem like what's going on. But I mean, you know, I've been here 10 minutes, so <laughs> maybe I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. And I think that covers it. I don't even know what the official language here is. They're speaking something we can't understand, but everybody we've talked to so far speaks English, and a lot of the signposting is in just like flat out English. Um, I saw some Arabic written on things as well, but that was like the only other language I've seen. It's Arabic and English, so maybe English is like a de facto language. Example? Yeah, yeah, look at this. Well, well, no, that's not a good example because that has a third language on it. <laughs> but we did need a convenience store and we found one. Yeah, we found a convenience store yeah. and it's, it's hooked to our hotel which we have now arrived at. Whoa, there's a big ant on my camera. <laughs> but you guys aren't gonna be able to see that. So I'm gonna hop out here and we're gonna take a look at the hotel. Uh, the hotel was, I don't know if I should be doing this. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> That's quite a drop. Okay, I think I can do this. I got, I got this thing. Yeah. And everything else that I know is just from observation. Um, the roads are very peaceful. Like it seems like we're thinking about dry, renting a car here and I don't think that's gonna be a big deal at all. We were hoping to rent a motorbike, but there aren't any. So I think people here have got enough money that they're not dealing with a motorbike in this heat. So everybody just has cars. Like, I'm under the impression this is, I mean, I'm sure there are people that are not so wealthy, but I'm getting under the impression that this is a pretty wealthy place. Here's that ant that was on my hand. He is moving quite quickly. Anyway, so anyway, here is our hotel. And it's kind of dank looking to be honest with you. We're gonna be staying in one of those rooms. Sometimes things look worse on the outside than they are at the inside. So let's hope that's kind of the case. I mean, whatever, it's kind of cheap. I think it was, Katie said it was $25 a night. So not like ridiculously cheap, but in a place that's oil rich, maybe that's an all right price. <laughs> There's a bridge here. I didn't have to risk my life. We need a snack. Um, actually, we got the snack because we knew we'd be coming to our hotel and getting a shower and that we would be walking to go get dinner, which isn't super close. It's a little bit of a walk away from our hotel. So we needed a snack before all this happened, or I'm gonna get grumpy. I might already be there. <laughs> um, and we've come to our hotel. It's been a little bit of a snag with the reservation. They're working it out and we're just chilling. And we went over to the convenience store and we've just found this. What is it? What, tell us everything you know about it. <laughs> you know? It comes from MC Grumpy. Mm. And uh, it just says uh, Hopia Fried Onion. Oh, it's oniony. Oh, wow. Yeah, all right, let's do this thing. What's inside? Onions. 
that have kind of been caramelized. Uh -huh. And then just a very dense and saturated pastry. I'm trying to think of something that I can compare it to. And it, I just, I don't is have Is there it. nuts in there? It looked like nuts. The like. nuts are just um, onions. They're caramelized onions. Oh, that's, oh, okay. And why is it red on top? Any idea? Mystery pastries are pretty fun. Maybe so that they can tell the pastries apart. Like maybe they have other ones that are this shape and the filling uh, is different. Doesn't have a flavor or anything? No, I peeled it off and it's just kind of bland. Interesting. Mm. But that's delicious. It tastes a little bit like Thanksgiving. Oh, weird. Yeah, pretty good. So, uh, Katie got the onion thing. I had one on point. Like, those things are really good. We're going to probably be eating more of those. And I kind of wussed out and like, I was like, I'm gonna get something I recognize. Did I mean, you like, really get it because you recognized no, it? No, I got it because I like carrots. Oh. Okay. got a carrot cake. <laughs> I figured it was something like more <laughs> along those lines. So here it is. And it's like, you know, it's like a little, little cake thingy. Carrots inside, I guess. I don't know. Is that traditional? If you're a rabbit. <laughs> if you're a rabbit. <laughs> I am. Mm -hmm. It's moist. Mm. This is really nice. Usually, in my in my mind, a carrot cake has got like frosting Icing, on it or yeah. whatever. Yeah, but uh, this is not necessary. It's still pretty sweet. Um, it's really dense, not quite as dense as the onion thing was, but I mean, it's carrot cake. <laughs> if you're ever here, like I'd recommend, I'd, I'd really recommend getting the onion thing, and then if if you're feeling like you need a sweet bite after that, the carrot cake is the carrot cake is all right. All right. Everything worked out, 407. It was a bit touch and go there. Didn't know if we'd have a hotel room, but we've got one. And uh, we're standing outside of it now. I'd like to point out how nice that girl was. She was really nice. Fi. Her name was Fi. Yeah, she was really cool. And she was really, really nice and really chatty, which was great. And uh, yeah, we're making friends at the hotel. All right, let's see if you can open this door. I always have trouble with this. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite part of all our videos, watching you open doors. I want to hear the doorbell. That's a nice ding. Yeah. It's still dinging. It's air conditioned like Reverberating. a in here. Alright. We've got like a, is it a suite of some sort? It feels like a suite. It's like a gingkong that we have. What's going yeah. on? Keep wow. going. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm distracted. Yeah. Whoa. There's some weird buttons here, man. What's all this do? What? Aircon units. Oh, we're gonna blast stuff. that temp. Wow, uh, look at that. Don't, don't. What are you doing? Okay. It's not, it's not, it's not a, it's not an airplane. I actually turned it down to one, so <laughs> therefore I was unblasting the temp. So it's not, it's not super classy or anything. It's kind of. It seems clean so far, but that always can be tricky. Like it seems clean it, when you come it in. Said that uh, it would feel like your aunt's unused guest room, <laughs> and it kind of does feel like that. Let's see what the bathroom is all about. The light switches go down for on, both here and there. Okay. And the doorbell was down too. <laughs> for ding. All right, so standard stuff. They had soap, yep. but we bought soap anyways. Normal Western toilet. Western toilet, which is very important, comes with towels, which is also very important. Yeah, that's nice. It is a gigantic bath. Oh my God, it's huge. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to take yeah, a bath. It's a that's, that's not bathable. Water pressure. Um, water pressure. It has a shower curtain, which is important and was one of the features that I looked for on the website. <laughs> um, and here we go on the shower. It's pointed right at you. <laughs> that's that's not that doesn't look terrible. But again, this, I think this country is rich. I think their infrastructure is going to be all right. Yeah. I don't think we're going to run into like... Is it hot? Warm. Nice. Yeah. Well, I didn't get hot. I got warm. Okay. I don't know. We're going to be burning a skin off tonight. <laughs> you know. It will definitely have a nice shower in a few moments. A well-deserved shower after a long adventure to get here in Brunei. Brunei? Mm -hmm. What did she say? She said it. <gasps> Brunei. I don't know. She said Brunei. Did she? She did, I'm pretty sure. I'm 90% okay. sure. We're going nigh. Brunei. 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 <laughs> Brunei. Nene. Brunei. Brunei. <laughs> Brunei. 
<laughs> I'm stealing more of your lines. <laughs> no, I was trying to call it Nay Nay. Oh. Just call it Nay Nay, done. <laughs> All right. We've walked about a kilometer away from our hotel to a hawker stall, a hawker center. And a hawker center is kind of just a co-op of a lot of different cooks cooking whatever they want at their own area. Um, and they all just conglomerate in this one area and you can come in and you can get seafood from one person, you can get satay from one person, you can get sweets from another person. It's, it's like a food court, but it's easier. Or seems slightly maybe illegal. Like, like they, they didn't establish themselves, they just built this, this little town of food. And uh, we're going to actually try some satay. Satay? Satay? S-A-T-A. Satay. Um, of beef and lamb. So I'm going to jump into that because I'm just excited. And how is, how is this the cooked? One. They cook it um, on just like a grill, just like yakitori, like putting it on the grill and then fanning it to make the embers below it like just get really excited and singe the meat. I want to taste it without any sauce on it. Did you just get some beef or some lamb that time? I believe this is beef because beef is four for a dollar and a, a brunei dollar. Brunei. <laughs> Brunei. 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 And what? lamb is three, so, and I can see the division in meats. Um, so I'm going to try the peanut sauce with it. It does seem a little glazed without the sauce. Was there a sauce on the meat? It tasted kind of glazed. Oh, that's what you a meant. A little okay. sweet. Yeah. It's a peanut sauce that isn't like straight on peanut. It's kind of got a little bit of spice to it, but a sweet spice. Everything involved in the sauté is sweet. Okay. Um, the lamb. I'm jealous of that lamb. Soft and crunchy, Ooh. a little bit fatty. Mm. I don't want to put any sauce on that, so I'm just going to leave it at that. The lady behind you is fanning a big old order right now. It's All really right. cool. <laughs> um, that was delicious. We also got a uh, ayam bakar, and we found out that ayam means chicken, and bakar means grilled. And I thought I just saw a rat run across here. Might have been one of the kittens. Could have been one of the kittens as well. Um, and this is our full meal. So this is the grilled chicken. Most meals are going to come with your standard steamed rice, and we've got lots of little veggies to the side, and I don't know if it's kind of a soup or a sauce, because they gave us some blazing sauce. Red, red means burn your face off. Um, I don't really know if this is sauce or soup, so we're going to find out about that one, because that's the one I'm most curious about. I love this. I don't have these skills. You can't wrap a tissue around nope. a spoon? <laughs> Is that a sauce? Is it a dipping sauce? I'm gonna say it's a sauce, and I think maybe it's supposed to go on top of the vegetables and maybe on the rice. Uh. Um, chicken wise, ayam bakar. Again, it looks kind of glazed, right? Yeah. The skin is still on, and I can tell you right now, Eric's going to be very, very happy about this. Yeah, it looks really good to me. I would almost say that if we had ordered two of these, we only got one. We would both be happy, but... Sometimes I worry about getting two meals with, from one vendor and just being like, all right, we're diving in with this vendor, um, but we should have dove in. But we can always just tell them to go make another one. Well, we could. Or <laughs> is, we could is, go get lots of sweets. Is the glaze on this chicken different than the glaze that was on this meat? Is it I would say they could be the same. Yeah. Is that like a barbecue flavor? It looks it's, like I mean, it's it looks quite like a barbecue, a barbecue chicken. flavor. Okay. Um, but not a sweet barbecue as opposed to a striking barbecue. Okay. Um, you're gonna love it. Good. And I asked the girl that works here what her favorite drink was, and she said iced tea. So I got the iced tea, mega sugar. It's amazing.
We may have just doubled down and ordered another one of those chickens. <laughs> Once I got a taste, I was like, nope, I'm not going to let you eat any more of this. You got to get your own. So that's where we landed. I want you to see what the total on this bill is. Let's find out. So it turns out that that meal, the two chicken plates, the five sticks, meat sticks? Seven. Seven meat sticks? Yeah. Oh, seven meat sticks. And the tea was $4.50 US. <laughs> so it was like six and a half uh, Burundi kroners, kroners, Burundi kroners, what's a kroner? Burundi kroners, they're actually Burundi dollars, but if I say dollars, then it's really confusing. So we're gonna call them kroners. Can we call it them B-dubs? B-dubs, yeah. Oh, well that's, that's Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, B-dabs. <laughs> We'll come up with something. Maybe we just call them kroners. Uh, anyway, so on the way home we hit the bodega. Yeah, we hit the bodega again and uh, we found some root beer. It says it's Australian, so this isn't some authentic <laughs> stuff from Brunei. Br Brunei. Um, <laughs> it's gonna get old. <laughs> People are walking and watching this are probably like, you idiots, learn the name of the country you're in. Um, so I really, really like root beer. And ooh, it's got a lot of pressure in there. It's kind of rare in Japan. I have, this is the second drink I've spilt tonight. Wow, what's going on here? Lots of bad stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and drink it and let the bed soak up the rest. <laughs> I'll get a napkin. It doesn't have any bite. It is very, Sugary. It, it, the 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 deep part is very. Yeah, it's thick. very deep. Yeah. I don't I don't know how to say that. The like, side of the tongue is really really strong. Root beer has like the highs and the mids. I don't think it has like a low, and the mids are really thick. Yeah, totally. Does anybody from Australia know that brand? Is that like a famous brand or anything, or is it even an Australia thing, or they just write Australia on it? It says Australia owned, family owned. Um, and then we've got something that looks like. That looks like a Japanese umeboshi. Yeah. But so it says peach. It says peach. And it... It's um, squishy. Um, like Umeboshi is like a plum that gets like... Uh, what do they do with sour it? Sourized. Yeah, sourized. They, they pickle yeah. it, basically. Yeah, they pickle it. They've definitely pickled this. But it, it has a sweetness to it. Is it a peach, for real? Mm-hmm. So and they it's made... it's been pickled. And it has kind of like a caramel taste that makes no sense that pickling and peaches would make caramel but they apparently do would you buy another one i'm thinking about sending them to a lot of people i know <laughs> <laughs> good luck guys <laughs> got some free gazed up hey guys i hope you enjoyed the uh, first part of the um the borneo series and um, all of our foolishness about not being able to pronounce the country we were in. <laughs> this is a spoiler. We figure it out. We figure it out eventually. <laughs> we get it nailed down. Um, so I know what it is now, but I'm not going to tell you what it is so that you can roll along with the goofiness that we were going with in the video. Um, so anyway, if you enjoyed the video, if, it would help us out a lot if you could hit the like button, it's like a thumbs up button, or leave a comment, or um, if you aren't subscribed to our channel and you're interested in seeing the rest of the series, uh, hit the subscribe button and then you can get you know notified about all that. And apparently like next to the subscribe button, if you're already subscribed, there's a bell or something. You can click a bell and then get notifications because sometimes YouTube doesn't like put things in subscriber boxes. It's getting harder and harder and harder to like, <laughs> like use YouTube. Like, is it just me or is it getting like out of hand? Anyway, um, besides all that, we've also, we've also got uh, Facebook where I post about like if we have new videos, I put that stuff on Facebook and we have a Twitter as well. And that is another way that you can be informed if you're worried about YouTube not giving you the information that you're hoping they give you. And um, then the whole project that we have here is funded through support at Patreon where our viewers are able to help contribute to our video series and that is directly responsible for us being able to make more videos. So if you are interested in helping us out that way, that would be awesome if you could check that out. Um, all the links for all that stuff is descriptions and like all over the place on the internet and whatnot. So it shouldn't be too difficult to find. 
Um, I wanted to, you're probably like, oh wait, there's only one person right now talking, where's the other person? And um, I wanted to kind of like, usually what I do at the end of these series, uh, end of the videos is take questions and stuff, but I want to kind of explain what's going on and why it's just me here at the moment. And basically, so we went to Borneo and then we came back on, I think the 5th of January, so like a week and a half ago from the point at which I'm shooting this. And then like less than 24 hours later, Katie got on a plane and went back to America. And the reason she's in America is because if you've been following our channel for a while, you realize that like every time Katie has vacation time, <laughs> we go on a trip somewhere like in Asia. And we'll go, you know, we went to Vietnam or Myanmar or Taiwan or whatever. Like, we always use her vacation time to do that stuff, and it's been really cool. The The problem with that is that she hasn't had an opportunity to go back to America and, like, see her family and see her friends and stuff. And as we've lived in Japan for, like, five and a half years or something, like, she has, she's just, she's, like, craving that, you know? She needs to refill her family cup. So she talked to her boss and... Her boss is like really was really super cool about the whole thing like she was like hey can I work from America for a while during the um, the slow season for her for her industry and her boss was like totally like yeah go it's totally fine so she is going to be in America from so she left uh, early January until end of March and she'll be in America spending time with various family members and seeing friends and then all of that stuff so there's gonna be a bit of a time period where I'm in Japan and she is in America and I just want to be like blunt there's nothing weird about our relationship going on here or anything it's purely she wants to see her family <laughs> and it's expensive to fly to America and stuff and I don't know I, did, I like being in Japan so <laughs> and so I'm gonna be in Japan for a while and it's like totally cool and everything everything is like completely legit between us and all that so She's been there for like a week and a half. I've been working on editing stuff and um, uh, just finishing up the video you just finished watching. And that explains like all of the things that are happening, I guess, between us, or with our, with, with not between us, but like with the missing her being here with me right now. So what I'm gonna ask of everybody that's watching this, if you're interested in, um, we usually get questions from our viewers like in the comments or whatever, and then I, I use those for the end cards. But most of the questions that I have saved up right now, which I plan on using, are kind of like the kind of question you'd ask two people, and like we both would talk about it, like what do you guys think about blah blah blah. And I think that like I kind of want to save those for when her and I are together to be able to shoot these end cards. And I was hoping that people could maybe come up with some questions that maybe are specific for Katie or specific for me. And if we get some of those questions, then I will have things that I can answer directly from 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 my perspective. And then the the questions that may be specifically for Katie, um, I will see if I can convince her to set some time aside and uh, shoot some of these end cards. And then I will include those in videos while she's not um, not in Japan. So um, that would be that would be awesome. So if you guys have any questions that like you're like okay, specifically you know directed towards Katie, then that would be that would be really handy, and I, I could use some in my direction as well. <laughs> Um, try to think if there's anything else. So the Borneo series is going to be rolling and my hitchhiking series is going to keep rolling and I'm trying to do some more like smaller videos here and there so um, hopefully I can keep those going and uh, if Katie can she plans on making a, maybe a video or two while she's in America and um, we've got so oh, I've got a video that we shot in Tokyo. I'm not going to tell anybody what it is. We shot it in Tokyo before we went to Borneo and I think it's going to be I haven't edited it yet, I haven't even looked at the footage, but what we went and did was pretty pretty unique and pretty cool, and that should be up um, maybe in a week or two, maybe three weeks, something like that. I gotta get it edited, I have this week's schedule, so yeah. So that'll be that'll be cool, and then um, hopefully, this is a bit of a secret, Katie doesn't know, I, I won't even, I, she might watch this, so I'm not gonna tell everybody exactly what it is, but I've got something, hopefully that if this pans out when she comes back, it's gonna be like an amazing video. So it'll be something we shoot hopefully in the spring. So we got a lot to look forward to right now. And um, I guess this is the first end card I've made this year. So Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking this out, y'all. Hope you're looking forward to the rest of the series. We're really looking forward. I, it was a really cool trip, by the way. So like, I, I hope everybody gets to gets to experience like this, like what we saw through the video. And like, I hope it portrays just how cool it was down on Borneo.